Hey everybody, I'm Tim Corpus, and welcome back to the channel. We're back taking another look at Zoom OSC paired with Touch OSC. So hopefully you saw the last video where I showed how you could use Zoom OSC with Touch OSC to do some simple, you know, chat messages or some simple controls. Uh, we're going to dive in a little bit deeper looking at a few more things. So once again, I'm working with my desktop editor. That's where I'm going to be building this template. I have an old iPad here, which is going to be running Touch OSC. Uh, and then we'll start up a Zoom meeting and see how it works. So let's go into the editor and make sure that your mobile device is connected. So hopefully you recognize this from last time. If not, go ahead and watch that last video. But the first thing we're gonna do is build a toggle and a button to control people raising their hands. So let's go ahead and make a button and we'll make this green. And then let's make a second button. We'll also make this green about the same size, makes sense. And then this one, I want to remove the background, but also be green. So we can see that. So let's take these two, right click, and then on messages, we're going to delete all messages. So there's nothing on here right now. So the first thing we're gonna do is uh, lower hands. So this is gonna lower everyone's hand. So let's go ahead and add a label in. And uh, we do not need the background. Um, so this is going to be to lower hands. And this is going to hit everyone. So what we need to do is add a message, an OSC message. So here on our button, and actually I'm going to make this a little bit bigger so we can see it. We select our button and go down here and let's add an OSC message and we can get rid of name, and we're just gonna select this little uh, slash here, and we are going to type in, on the right side of that, zoom, slash all, slash lower hand. So when we push this button, it's gonna lower everyone's hands. But then we wanna make one that we can toggle raising our hand and lowering our hand. And this is only gonna impact us, the user, also known as me in Zoom OSC. So let's add another label, bring this down here, and we can get rid of the background. And this is gonna be toggle hand. So we'll take this, and what we're gonna do is again, we'll add an OSC message. We'll get rid of the name, and then this one is going to be slash zoom slash me slash toggle hand. Now, why you're asking, would I care to learn how I could push a button to toggle raising my hand and lowering my hand? I don't know. Seemed like a cool thing to take a look at with Zoom OSC, and it's good for uh, folks to see how toggles can work as well with this. There's a myriad of different options in their system uh, of what you could do with it, and this just showcases, uh, you know, a fun one, especially lowering everyone else's hands, because you've been on those webinars where like 60 people raise their hand at the same time, and you're not ready for questions yet, so it's nice to be able to solidly lower everybody's hands until the appropriate time. All right, before we take a look at this, let's go ahead and move this down. We're going to build our template out first, and then we're gonna jump into a meeting to showcase this. But the next thing we need is pretty crucial, and it's going to be a list of details. Now this list of details is gonna be able to tell you the user ID information and the user name for everybody in your meeting, which is gonna make it so that we can spotlight people, because we need to know their names or their user ID in order to set this up. So. Let's go ahead and get the information from them using this list details. So we'll make a button and let's make this yellow and I'm going to get rid of the background as well. Make this nice and big and we're gonna put it right in here. And let's add a label. And we're gonna call this list details.
So let's move this in here. Actually, I think I'm gonna get rid of the outline. And let's go ahead and select our button here. Come down here, we don't need this MIDI message, so let's get rid of that. And here on our OSC, let's get rid of name. And what we're gonna put in is slash zoom slash list. Really simple, but it's gonna give us all the information we need to be able to spotlight people. So let's go ahead and fire up Zoom OSC and see how these will work. So we can see that the Zoom meeting is working. We have the OBS logo, which is the desktop. We have me, which is the laptop. And of course we have Lancelot joining the meeting uh, who is asleep. So uh, let's go ahead and raise my hand here on this laptop. Raise hand. And you can see that uh, little figure in the top. And I'm just gonna go ahead and push the button to lower all hands. And you can see that it is running down here. And then it lowered the hand. And now me, which is the desktop computer, I can raise my hand. So I'm gonna push that toggle. You can see the toggle is lit up. And also I am raising my hand. And then I will push that toggle again, which will lower my hand. And of course, if I was to push that toggle, have my hand up, and then lower all hands, it resets and it lowers my hand, but it keeps the toggle alive. So that is one tricky thing about this that uh, isn't great, but uh, if you know what you're doing, you can avoid that issue. You could also set up a local message that when you push that button, it clears your toggle so that it resets. So now we'll take a look at an important feature, which is listing the details. So let's take a look here at the status window and let's push that list details. And here you go, we have a list of participants, which is important. So we have Zoom OSC, which is the desktop, Tim Corpus, which is my laptop, and then Lancelot. So if you wanted, you could do by Zoom ID or user ID and use these. These are generated each time you start a meeting, so they will not always be the same. Most likely, people are gonna have their names be consistent. So we're gonna use that and spotlight different users. So let's go back into our template and make some buttons for controlling users. So let's go ahead and make a button. And uh, nice and big here to control spotlighting different users. And let's go ahead and make this some sort of purple. And we'll put this right here. And we're going to make different buttons to spotlight different people. So we have this first one, which is going to, let's uh, add a label and this one's gonna be for me. So we'll get rid of the background, get rid of the outline. And this is going to be Spotlight Me. And now we're gonna replicate this. Let's make another button and one more. So this one is going to be for Lancelot. And this one is going to be for Tim Corpus, which is the laptop. And we'll change these colors just so we have a little bit of a different view. Perfect. So let's go ahead and select all these. Let's get rid of any messages because we want to start fresh here. And in the Spotlight Me button, let's go down here and add a message, OSC. We can get rid of name. And here what we're gonna do is slash zoom, slash me, slash spot. So now when we push this button, it will spotlight ourselves. Now to spotlight Lancelot, let's add another message. Same as before. And this is gonna be slash zoom, slash user with a capital N for name, and then slash spot. Now, to spotlight this person, we have to know what their name is, which we did in the details. So let's go ahead and take this X. We can delete this argument. We don't need it. We're gonna add a constant. And here under constant, let's go ahead and add the name. So that is Lancelot. Something to note here is that punctuation can be difficult for Zoom OSC to understand. So if you have somebody who has you know, some strange punctuation in their name, it may be easier to do user ID uh, or just change their name. 
And then our last one here, let's add an OSC message, get rid of name. And again, it's gonna be zoom slash username slash spot. We'll get rid of this argument, add a constant. Uh, and it is important that this constant is a string because uh, we're calling for uh, a certain username. And then we're gonna put in my name, Tim Corpus. Now, if we want to unspotlight, or if we wanna change the gallery view, uh, that could be an important thing. So let's go ahead and add another button, and we're gonna get rid of the background, make this nice and big, and let's add a label. And this is going to be unspotlight, which will only impact me, but you'll see that in a second. And this is going to be, let's get rid of the MIDI message. This OSC message here is going to be slash zoom because everything starts with this process. And then me because we're impacting me and then unspot. And that'll be a capital S. And if you forgot where all of these code messages were, they're in that really nice uh, document that Zoom OSC has prepared and you can look through all of those. I have that link in the description below. And actually I'm gonna make this, uh, I'm gonna get rid of the background cause it's kind of annoying, get rid of the outline. And then let's set a gallery view for everyone because when we unspotlight, it's gonna still keep it on an individual person. So let's add a button. And then we will make this like a really light color here. Add a label. And this is gonna be gallery view. So to make the gallery view happen, let's select our button, get rid of the MIDI message. And our OSC message here is going to be slash zoom slash me, and you'll see why it's going to just me, slash set gallery view, and gallery and view are capitalized. Great, and then we'll be able to show a gallery view. So let's go ahead and try this out. So let's pull our meeting back up. So here's our meeting, and let's just go ahead and uh, try one of these buttons out. Actually, first I'm gonna sit this reminder button, and you can see here in the chat, it says, don't forget to like and subscribe. So let's go ahead and spotlight just me. Hit that purple button there, and you can see it's asked me to join the audio, which is fine, but this is my desktop computer, and I am spotlit. And now let's spotlight the dog, Lancelot. So we hit that, and you can see he's been spotlit. And then you can go to Tim Corpus, which is the laptop, and now I'm spotlit. And of course this little unmute myself things comes up, but we can ignore that. And now we can see that the laptop or Tim Corpus is spotlit. But if we wanted to move things around a bit and unspotlight, let's go back to spotlight me. And now you can see the desktop is uh, spotlit. And if you were to unspotlight, you return everyone to the gallery view, which is super helpful. Or if you were in spotlight mode, let's say we had Lancelot showing, but you want to just check uh, what everybody else is doing, you hit that gallery view and it has only changed it for you, not for everyone else. And again, to return everyone to gallery view, return to you on spotlight and everybody is set back at a gallery view. So this is a really powerful way to run a meeting. Uh, especially if you're doing a presentation or a concert and you have people performing from their different houses or you have different presenters. Uh, this way you can control who's being spotlit when as opposed to having people search around and try to pull themselves up in the full screen mode or having it automated when uh, you know somebody talks and then they become spotlit, which can be really annoying if somebody's dog barks in the background, a cough, or the computer just makes a glitch. So this is a great way to control that meeting. And of course, throughout that meeting, you can use these other buttons that we looked at to mute folks or send automated chats that you write in advance. So thanks to the folks at Liminal for their help. That was really great uh, to kind of dig into what Zoom OSC can do with Touch OSC. 
and hopefully this makes your presentations a little bit more professional looking uh, like you're running it from a camera board. So hopefully you learned something. You can like this video, subscribe to the channel because we have lots more that we're going to cover as always. And uh, you can also buy me a coffee. I uh, appreciate your support and I'll see you guys next time. Just a quick tag here because a couple people have asked questions. I am using a very old iPad. It's actually plugged in right now, but I have used it over Wi-Fi to check and make sure it works. Uh, this thing is from like 2013, uh, so the battery hardly holds on. Um, but yes, the answer to the question is, can you use an old iPad, like an old iPad Air? Yeah, you can. So whatever tablet, you can also use an Amazon Fire tablet. Those are pretty cheap, so check those out too.